Thank you so much, Henry. Uh, that was a wonderful combination of self-loathing Brit and brash American. <laughs> And uh, I really actually couldn't have hoped for a better collaborator in the work that we've done together on sort of defining this new era, this, this new power world that we've described in Henry. And as Henry will always say, the best lines in the book are his. So uh, it's, been a, it's been a real joy. So I want to, um, I want to talk a little bit about um, the concept of internationalism. Uh, because this award is is um, is for responsible internationalism, and uh, and it's a word that means a lot to me. And I want to start by um, sort of telling the story of two uh, schoolgirls. One you will have heard of, one you won't. That I think embody the the kind of juncture that we're at in the world today. So the first is a Scottish schoolgirl called Aksa Mahmood. So Aksa was about 17 years old, had a very normal childhood growing up in Glasgow. Uh, she was known to have loved Harry Potter. And one day, Aksa disappeared. And a few days later, her parents get a, a call from her. They're obviously frantically worried about her. And she's calling them from Syria, where she traveled all the way from the bus station in Glasgow to Syria to join the Islamic State. So once Aksa kind of gets to Syria, she becomes one of the most effective recruiters for ISIS. And her sort of brief is to take the ideology of ISIS, right, this ideology of medieval theocracy, uh, you know, the deepest form of tribalism, and adapt it to lure other sort of lost girls from the West over to join her um, in Syria. And we described this, um, and we stumbled on this work in, in our book, and we sort of studied her methods. Like, how did this um, young girl find her way to Syria and then successfully bring all of these other girls with her to join this sort of satanic death cult. And basically, when you study her methods, what she did is she creates this kind of network of girls around the world. It's intimate, it has proximity, it has a sense of belonging. If you look at her blog, her Tumblr, you know, it could be a, a Tumblr for Justin Bieber, right? It's full of memes and emojis, but instead it's, it's, it's advocating jihad, right? It has these seemingly banal listicles here is the list of toiletries you should bring when you come to Syria. Bring organic coconut oil because it's not widely available. Um, and this seems kind of banal, but it's actually a really important part of understanding how effective this girl was at mobilizing right around this ideology. And the girl that you will know, of course, is Greta Thunberg. And Greta Thunberg, of course, um, similarly, this girl with no bully pulpit, she was a nobody. She didn't have access to institutional power. No one was inviting her to the St. Regis for dinner. <clears throat> and she nonetheless, right, became the spark of this extraordinary decentralized movement. And what's important to understand is that Greta is no Martin Luther King. The movement that she stewards, she's just one of thousands of leaders. And I've had the opportunity to meet some of them as I've traveled around the world and, and Purpose works very closely with the, the climate movement. These are extraordinary people. And all over the world, these are people who are essentially marching the Fridays for Future movement. They're striking every Friday, right? not just for their own towns, their own countries, their own futures, but for all of us, right? They embody the values of internationalism um, and the urgency in this moment of international cooperation. So, you know, a couple of observations about these two girls. Firstly, it's, it's remarkable that there are these two girls, right, that are now able to steward movements that are transnational, and in the case of Greta, and indeed of, of the Islamic State, that have involved you know, millions of people around the world. So that has really big implications, because the fact that anyone now has their hands on the means of participation, what Henry and I would call new power, is a very big deal. And it means that those of us who run big institutions need to reckon with that fact and need to begin to figure out how do we build alliances with those on the side of the angels. These two girls really are a metaphor, I think, for where we are right now, right? This conflict that plays out you know, everywhere and in every context between tribalism and nativism um, and the values of internationalism. So 
The question I have today for all of us, really, is this is a group of people who are obviously committed to internationalism. But in a world in which the future, I think, is going to be shaped by who can mobilize around their values most effectively, who can mobilize best? Will it be the Gretas or will it be the Axes, right? How do we generate the sort of intensity, the sort of energy around internationalism and international cooperation as a value that we need to? So I think about my own work and those moments where that has really clicked, right? Because I think, as Mark said very aptly, right, the, the reason that provocation, extremism, hate, these negative values are so prolific now is that we live in a world in which, you know, social media actually really, it, the business model lends itself to that, right? So we are primed to be drawn to those things. So it's actually a lot harder to generate the same kind of intensity that we're seeing around these negative values, around positive values. So when I think about the moments in, in our work we've done that, let me give you a couple of examples. So in Syria, Mark also mentioned Syria, we were working on how do we get the world to understand the crisis in Syria. And we found this extraordinary group of uh, volunteer civilians who, in response to the Assad regime's relentless barrel bombing, decided to take matters into their own hands. So they start forming these volunteer rescue brigades where they put their own lives at risk and they go after the barrel bombings and they try to pull people out of the rubble to save them. And we, we got to meet those uh, folks and we helped introduce them to the world as the White Helmets. And, and And I was you know, very privileged to spend time with the White Helmets um, in southern Turkey where they train across from the Syrian border. And these guys just embody the values of internationalism better than any of us could, right? The, their motto is to save one life, which is also um, uh, indeed a motto of, of um, is, is part of Muslim faith. To save one life is to save all of humanity. And they were so charged by that work. And we help to mobilize a community of people around the world to express solidarity with them. Ended up raising, I think, about $25 million in crowdfunding. To me, that was a moment where I'm like, it's possible to spread these values of internationalism in a way that can really mobilize people. I also think about that moment where uh, in 2015, after uh, Ilan Kurdi, that little boy, washed up ashore, um, his lifeless body, and that photo shocked the world that there was this outpouring of internationalism in what was called at the time the Refugees Welcome Movement. You'll remember that there were these people who showed up to train stations in places like Munich with bouquets of flowers to, 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 to impart on those people, these arriving refugees, that they were truly welcome. That is internationalism. But it was also a movement that spread using this new power that I described, using those online techniques that really allowed um, a huge surge of public pressure to appear and, and that played a real role in the refugee resettlement commitments that Merkel made at that period and a number of other European governments made. But at the same time, you know, we faced the blowback. So to me, I think that the, the challenge for, for us is how do we make the idea of internationalism as passionate, right, almost as romantic as the... Uh, as the, the, the kind of tribalism and nativism that is spreading around the world. As Henry mentioned, I was a child activist, and for me, and I, 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 I kid you not, the word internationalist was really how I defined my identity as a kid. I was obviously quite a strange child. Um, so I was the child of a Holocaust survivor, and so the big story of my childhood was hearing my father talk about the narrow escape, right, almost... Uh, you know, just narrowly surviving this extraordinary experience. And so to me, that imparted on me this idea that there was always going to be this kind of, this, this kind of tension between are we going to go toward nativism or internationalism? And for me, internationalism was, was, the, was the way out. It was the bulwark against something like that happening again. And I was very... Uh, you know, I, I was passionate about the United Nations and about international institutions. So here we are in 2019, and where do we sit? Internationalism's kind of gone out of fashion. You don't really hear the word very much. Um, and people have lost faith in international institutions. At the same time, where was Greta 
last week. She was at the United Nations and she was saying in, in, a, in admittedly an exasperated way, I need you as institutions to show up in this moment to kind of reinvigorate this idea of international cooperation. And I think that that to me is the glimpse of what is possible. If we can put the movements, these movements like Greta's movement, these new power forces uh, in favor of these values um, of internationalism, together with the institutions that we still need, that's when it happens. When Angela Merkel gets up and says, one of the reasons that I'm moving more aggressively toward a carbon price for Germany is because of the pressure from these school children you begin to glimpse the possibility of the alliance between movements and institutions that I think can reinvigorate internationalism. So thank you so much. It's a wonderful honor. Um, I'm delighted to receive this award and uh, I look forward to chatting with all of you later. Thanks so much.